I have an object moving around in a circle, let's say it's going clockwise like this, and I got a, a certain point where the object is at a certain given moment in time, and I wanted to draw the velocity vector, where would I draw the velocity vector? How would I draw the velocity vector? Straight across, right? Straight across like this. In other words, the velocity of the object at any given point in the circle is a, what's the word we use? A tangent to the circle. Good. Um, what about the acceleration vector? We're talking about uniform circular motion here, so objects moving at a constant speed. How can there be an acceleration if the object is traveling at a constant speed? Nick? Yeah, it's changing direction, and acceleration is based on velocity, not on speed. Uh, now, it usually works out that there's an acceleration because the magnitude of the velocity is changing, but sometimes, as in this case, there's an acceleration because the direction of the velocity is changing. So there is an acceleration. Which way is the acceleration pointing? Julia? Good. The acceleration is toward the center of the circle. You're always going to find in these problems that the velocity and the acceleration are perpendicular to each other. The velocity is, is a tangent to the circle, and the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. Now, what about the centripetal force? If you recognize the direction of the centripetal acceleration, then the force shouldn't be all that hard. Which way is the force acting here? Yeah, it's also toward the center of the circle. Now, we can describe the centripetal acceleration using the equation V squared over R. The magnitude of the centripetal acceleration doesn't give us the direction, but that's okay because we just said the direction is always toward the center of the circle. The centripetal force is given by the equation M times V squared over R. Now, sometimes we don't have the value of V. Okay, if we don't have the value of V, how are we most likely going to find it? I mean, if we have the force or the acceleration, then we can rearrange and solve for V. We're going to find the speed if we can't rearrange this equation, solve for speed. Like we don't have the acceleration. We don't have the force. We have to find the speed some other way. And we're going to find it how? V is equal to? Talking about an object in uniform circular motion, V is equal to D over T, right? But um, specifically in the context of a circle, we can change that equation D over T into the equation. It's on your data sheet, Alex. Yeah, good. 2 pi R over T. What's T stand for? The period of time for one complete cycle. Uh, and sometimes we don't even have the period. So what, how, how maybe could we find period? Well, the period is the time for one complete cycle, so time over number of cycles, or we could say, Nick, good, we could say T is equal to 1 over F. So um, generally, we get a problem involving centripetal acceleration, centripetal force, and we're just going to write down the equation. But if we need to find something, then we follow the strategy that we followed through the whole year when we are missing a variable. Is We get that variable some other way, and if we're missing a variable from that equation, then we Come up with another equation to get that variable. Okay, This is essentially your quiz tomorrow, OK? Centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. Maybe you get this stuff tossed in. Maybe you don't. Okay, But the bottom line is you're going to have to find centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. Just a couple little reminders. Okay, when finding force, make sure your mass is in kilograms, because a lot of times we get the mass given to us in grams. The speed needs to be in meters per second. A lot of time we're given that speed in kilometers per hour. You want to convert from grams to kilograms, divide by a thousand. Yeah, and do it on your calculator if you have trouble moving the decimal place over yourself. Okay, when you're converting from kilometers per hour to meters per second, we're going to multiply by a thousand and then divide by 3,600. Good? Yesterday, uh, we talked a little bit about centrifugal force. Centrifugal force was that non-existent force, but that force that we felt or perceived pushing us outwards toward the outside of a circle. We said that it doesn't really exist. So what is it really? Why do we feel centrifugal force? Why do we feel being pushed to the outside, yet we're not really being pushed to the outside? Yeah, it's just inertia. Okay? You want to go in a straight line. So what happens is that as you're going around in the circle, you end up going in a straight line. By the time the wall ends up going around to that spot, you end up out of the wall. So it feels to you, you perceive yourself as being pushed to the outer wall, but really what it is is you're just going in a straight line and then the wall catches up with you. 
So it's not a force. It's a pseudo force, a fake force that you feel just like you feel any force, just like you feel a pseudo force anytime you have an acceleration. We talked about that yesterday as well, right? If you accelerate forward in your car, then you feel like you're being pushed backwards into your seat. You're not, okay, but you perceive a pseudo force opposite to the direction of acceleration every time you accelerate. If you accelerate right, you feel like you're being pushed left. If you accelerate forward, you feel like you're being pushed backwards. Make sense? Finally, we're going to do, uh, do a little review of the stuff that we did for homework last night, which is our vertical circular motion stuff. We know that whenever we have an object going around in a vertical circle, we have two forces acting on the object, whether we're at the top of the circle or at the bottom of the circle. Now, I usually draw these as roller coasters, but in the end, it could be a bucket of water swinging on the end of a, of a handle or of a rope, right? It doesn't really matter as long as it's something going in an upside down circle. We analyze two parts, the top and the bottom part, because those are the extremes. In both cases, we would say F net, actually in both cases, we'd draw a free body diagram first. What forces do we have acting at the top and the bottom? Kessler, what's one of them? Gravity acts which way? Good, in both cases? Yeah, gravity acts downwards in both cases. And what are the force do we have acting on it here? The normal force, and the normal force acts which way when we're at the top of the circle? Downwards, and which way does it act when we're at the bottom of the circle? It's going to act upwards. We know that normal force at the bottom of the circle is bigger than the, than, uh, the force of gravity. Otherwise, you wouldn't be going in a circle. Now we're going to say F net is equal to the sum of the forces, Fg plus Fn. And finally, we're going to replace F net with M times A, but specifically with circular motion becomes MV squared over R. Good. MV squared over R is equal to Fg, which is mass times gravity, plus the normal force. What's another name for the normal force? What do we sometimes call the normal force? Yep. Uh, it could be the tension if it's a rope, right? Um, yep. No, it's not the centripetal force. The centripetal force is the combined gravity and normal force. You wouldn't talk about this if you were talking about a rope, something on the end of a rope, but you might talk about it if it's a roller coaster problem. The normal force is, or an elevator problem, the normal force is your, not your weight, but uh, no, not quite the G's, but almost. It's the apparent weight. It's how heavy you feel. Tomorrow, when you're working on your assignment, you're going to have a few questions where you want to find your apparent weight. What are you looking for? The normal force, whether it's an elevator type problem like the space shot or whether it's a roller coaster type problem like this, you're looking for the normal force if you're looking for apparent weight. And then remember what I said? If you want to find the number of Gs, you can take the acceleration divided by 9.81 or you can take the normal force, the apparent weight, and divide it by the actual weight, the force of gravity. All right, uh, top of the circle. Top of the circle is mg positive or negative? Negative. For, uh, normal force, positive or negative? Negative. negative. Centripetal force? Negative. negative. At the bottom of the circle, gravity negative or positive? positive. Normal force, negative or positive? Negative. Positive because it's upwards. Centripetal force, negative or positive? positive? Positive because it's upwards. All right? Now you got those. You got the signs down pat. Now let's take a look at our homework that we had last night, which was page 264, questions 1 and 3. Do you want to go over one of those? you want to go over both of those? What do we want to do here? Yep. Three. Question number 3. Okay, um, one as well. Okay, let's take a look at one and three. Uh, number one says, using the information in example 5.7, what's the tension of the rope at position A? So let's go back here. And this time we want to find the tension at position A. Uh, let's draw our free body diagram. We've got gravity acting down. We've got a normal force acting down. We're going to say F net is equal to the sum of the forces, Fg plus Fn. We're going to say Mv squared over R is equal to mg plus fn. And we're going to say what? m is 1.5 kilograms. The speed is 3. Divided by the radius is 0.75. Uh, mass times gravity is 1.5 times 9.81. And plus the normal force. Now we've got to worry about signs. At the top of the circle, is the centripetal force pause or nay? 
Negative because it's acting downwards. Force of gravity? Negative. Yeah, all right. So on the left-hand side, 3 squared is 9. 1.5 divided by 0.75 is 2. 2 times 9 is 18. Uh, 1.5 times 9.81 is 14.715. We're going to take the 14.715 over by adding, and we end up getting, what, 3.285? Yeah, it would be negative 3.285. which is negative 3.3 newtons. Why is it a negative value? I mean, mathematically, it worked out to be a negative value. Why should it have worked to be a negative value? It's pointing downwards, right? We knew it was pointing downwards. We knew it should have been a negative value before we even started here. So here's a situation where if this was a roller coaster as opposed to a bucket of water, the actual weight is 14 newtons. The apparent weight would be 3.3. So at the top of the circuit, you'd actually feel lighter than you really are, right? But you'd still feel like up was down. You just wouldn't feel as heavy. We good there? Jonah, is that okay? Okay, let's take a look at question number three. A 0.98 kilogram rock is attached to a 0.4 meter rope and spun in a vertical circle. The tension on the rope, and when the rock is at the top, is 79 newtons down. What's the speed of the rock? Um, top, here's the rock, force of gravity acting down, here's the normal force acting down. We're going to say F net, once again, is equal to the sum of the forces, Fg plus Fn. We're going to say mv squared over R is equal to mg plus Fn. And what are we looking for here? Speed, mass is 0 0.98. Speed is what we're looking for here. R is 0 0.40, 0 0.98 times 9.81. And the normal force or the tension, okay, whatever you want to call it, is 79 newtons. Eight okay, signs here. Um, gravity, uh, positive or negative? Negative because you're at the top. Uh, it's pointing downwards. Normal force, positive or negative? Negative because it's pointing downwards. Centripetal force? Negative as well because it's pointing downwards. Um, we don't plug in a sign until we plug in numbers for an expression. But even though we didn't plug in all our numbers for this expression, we started. So we're going to worry about the sign now. Okay, let's calculate. Let's calculate that. Should end up getting six according to the book, but let's make sure. On the left hand side, we got 0 0.98. 0 0.98 divided by 0.4. That gives me negative 2.45. On the right-hand side, we're going to say 0.98 times 9.81. It's going to give us negative 9.6138. Subtract 79. So let's combine the terms on the right-hand side now. Negative. 9.6138 subtract 79 gives me negative 88. And now let's divide it by 2.45 or negative 2.45. And now let's square root it. And when we do that, we get 6.01 which rounds to 6.0 meters per second, which is the answer that they gave us in the book. Okay, how many people got that? Good. I could probably give you a quiz on this stuff tomorrow. I won't. We'll, we'll have another day to review that before we do, but um, I think you guys are doing okay there. Let's have a look at another one here, 5.6 on 262. It says a 700 kilogram roller coaster full of people goes around a vertical loop that has a diameter of 50 meters. Okay, that's, we got to be careful about that because we don't want to make that our radius. What are we going to do to that to make it our radius? Divide it by two, right? What's the minimum speed that the roller coaster must have at the top of the vertical circle so that it stays on the track? The minimum speed? Well, here's the deal. You guys can watch me right now, swing my keys 
in a vertical circle. As I swing them right now, hey, I'm swinging them plenty fast for the keys to go around in a complete circle, right? But if I slow the keys down, if I slow the keys down too much, then the keys don't make it all the way around the circle. They fall out of the circle, right? So clearly, if I go fast enough, it makes it all the way around the circle. If I go too slow, it doesn't. There's got to be a threshold there where they'll barely make it around the circle. That would be our minimum speed. That's the value that we're looking for. So how do we find that value? Well, let's first draw a free body diagram, figure out what's going on. Uh, at the top of the circle, if it's going to fall out of the circle, it's going to be the top, right? You never have to worry about it at the bottom. So if you're looking for minimum speed, analyze the problem at the top of the circle. At the top of the circle, we have gravity acting down and normal force acting down. We would say Fc is equal to, or we'd say F net is equal to the sum of those forces, Fg plus Fn. Mv squared over R is equal to Mg plus Fm. But watch closely here. Watch closely as I swing these keys around in a vertical circle again. As I slow down, okay, you can imagine that I don't actually have to pull on the string as hard, right? If I'm swinging really, really fast, I have to pull on the string pretty hard because the keys have a, are, are wanting to go to the outside of the circle a lot. Okay? They have this high tendency to go to the outside of the circle. I have to pull hard. But as I slow them down, I don't have to pull quite as hard. As I slow them down to the bare minimum speed, now they're going at the bare minimum speed. What's the tension in that string? How hard am I pulling to keep them going in a circle at the top of the circle? What is it? No, not very hard. In fact, zero. Above the minimum speed, below the minimum speed, they don't go in a circle. So all bets are off. Comes a projectile motion question then, I guess. But above the minimum speed, the normal force or the force of the string has to be applied. But at the minimum speed, gravity does all the work. Okay, at the minimum speed, we actually don't have a normal force. So remember this. When you're looking for minimum speed, when you're looking for minimum speed, make the normal force zero. The string doesn't have to pull at all. The track doesn't have to push at all. The normal force is zero. So the equation just becomes this. mv squared over r is equal to m times g. Now, this allows me to cancel an m because I've got one in every term. Anybody riding the roller coaster the other day on a field trip thinking, sitting beside somebody really heavy thinking, uh-oh, I'm behind somebody, beside somebody that's heavy. Uh, maybe we're going to fall out at the top of the loop. It doesn't make any difference. Right? The mass cancels. The minimum speed is the same regardless of what the mass is because the mass cancels. So this equation that had quite a bit to it just turns into this. V squared over R is equal to G. And we're looking for V. So we're going to say V squared over the radius here, which is 25 meters, equals G, which is 9.81. Now, technically, this is negative because gravity is down, and so is this because the centripetal force is down. But in the end, because they're both negative, Negatives end up canceling. We're going to multiply 9.81 times 25. And then we're going to square root it. And we get 15.66. Or we're going to say V is equal to 15.7 meters per second. Above 15.7 meters per second, okay, this object stays in the circle just fine. If you go faster and faster and faster, then it remains in the circle, of course. The string just has to pull a little bit harder to keep it in that vertical circle. Um, but below 15.7 meters per second, then you got a situation where the keys are going around like this, but they fall out at the top of the circle. Yeah, that's the speed that you want to be moving when you're going around the roller coaster loop so that you don't fall out. Okay, why, is the, why is the hill really, really high at the beginning of the roller coaster to give you enough energy, to give you enough speed to make it around that loop, basically. Right? Make sense? All right. I'm going to have you take a look at these two questions on page 262, and those will be your homework for tonight.